Today I want to go and explain you the difference between WordPress posts and WordPress pages. Because for especially beginners, it can be very confusing. So let's get right into it. WordPress pages are mainly for static content that doesn't need to be changed that often. So let's take a look at a few examples, okay? This is official website of New York State. And we can see this is their home page. As you can see, it doesn't need that many changes regularly, okay? For example, you have a government inside here. It doesn't need to go and change this on a daily basis, okay? So let's take another example. This is site of Disney, and you can see this is your home page, probably one of the most popular pages there are gonna be. Whenever you wanna go and see pages, they are usually gonna be displayed in two places. First one is gonna be header, you can see it inside here. And the second one is gonna be footer. Okay, so once again, those are pages that doesn't need to be changed that often. For example, contact us page, privacy policy page, service page, refund policy page if you have, for example, issue. It doesn't need to be changed that often. We can go and categorize them through WordPress in two categories. We have parent page and we have child page. So we can see it, for example, inside here. We have packs and travel, which is one big category. And under it, we have smaller pages. For example, Walt Disney World Resort, the Disneyland Resort. We have Adventure by Disney. But now you may be confused because like, what is it? Because like you can see, here are some pages and some content like this. Okay, so let's explain it. We're gonna go and hover over more, which is one page. And we have three child pages inside it. I'm gonna go and click on Disney News. Okay, so we can see inside here, this is Disney News page. And you can see this is one big page, but this specific page consists of many posts, okay? So we can see those are all individual posts inside here. Usually we're gonna go and display them in chronological order, just for our readers to make it easier for them. And here's the difference. For example, if you will go to this website, for example, in six months, you're still gonna see one big Disney News page. But the content of it, the blog posts, are gonna be different because they are usually updated. They are more time sensitive, we can say, okay? So let's click on one specific blog post. Okay, we can see it inside here. This is how your regular posts are gonna look. It's basically something you're gonna advertise. You can go and share this on social medias, for example. And you can display many stuff. You can go, for example, display writer. You can go give them the picture. You can go and display, for example, date and all of this stuff. And it can also be shared on social media. But you may be asking yourself, well, okay, but what do I need for my website? Okay, so let's take a look at it. This is a website called Pinch of Camp. And this is basically one big recipe blog. And you can see, once again, this is a home page. And we can see they have some another pages inside here. And all of those are your posts. Okay. So for example, if somebody want to go into Google, let's see how it's going to differ. So somebody is searching for spicy shrimp tackers. And what they will actually go and want to look at is posts. Okay. So I'm going to go click on spicy shrimp tacos and we can see it took us to post. So we can see there, for example, reviews, they have some introduction who is writing it. And this is one single recipe, one singular post. But they also have one big page dedicated only for tacos. And you can see inside here that recipes inside here are parent page and they have many, many, many subsections. So in this case, it's going to be child page tackles. And now some of you may be confused and asking this, well, do I need them? Or which one do I actually need? Well, let's take a look at this example. Let's say we are looking for photographer. Okay, let's say we are looking for Peter McKinnon. And when we're gonna go and click on his website, he doesn't have blog posts on his website because he doesn't need it. This is a specific case of website when he just wanna go and show off his work or in this example, also sell some of his stuff. For example, Lightroom presets. He doesn't need to go and write that much about it. He just need few pages like shop, collapse, about us page and contact me page. Let's take a look at a different example. Let's say we are looking for this artist called David Milan. 
and I want to go and see his work. Now, ask yourself this question. Do you want to go and read about it or do you want to go and see it? Because you have to think about stuff like this whenever you are creating a website. So I'm going to go and click on his website and you can see this is one big page. This is your home page. He has only three pages on this whole website. Home page, about page and contact page. And you can see it inside here. It's very, very simple. He only needs to show off his work. He doesn't need to go and build a specific pages for it, okay? So you just want to go, scroll and look at how creative his work actually is. So there are differences in using them, okay? And for example, if you have eShop like the Udi inside here, you also don't need that many blog posts. You don't need any blog posts. You are going to be focusing on product pages, which is something completely different, okay? Now here is the big tip. Whenever you are working with WordPress posts, and definitely start organizing it for day one and use categories and tags in order to go and have control over your content. Because for example, if we're going to go to a website like this, we can see that all of those recipes are categorized inside WordPress as titles. So when you are rebranding your website or you just want to go and show, for example, your taco recipes, you can simply do it by few clicks. You don't need to go and manually select from hundreds and hundreds of recipes. You can do it once and that's it. Okay, so I hope now you understand the biggest difference between them and you can go and see it. Okay, so don't forget pages, you're going to go and find them usually in header or footer and it's more static content. On blog post, you're going to be writing a lot more and it's more time sensitive and usually it's displayed in a chronological order and definitely keep in mind you want to go and categorize them and use text from the day one. If you find this explanation so useful, definitely subscribe for more videos like this and also like this video to show another people looking for exactly this same problem that this video can answer. This is everything from today. Have a nice day and goodbye.